Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Magic, Mystery, and Medicine. I am very excited to have my special guest here today, Wes Geets. Am I pronouncing that correctly? You are indeed. I am. Yay. Yes. Good start. <laughs> Excellent start to yeah. the show. Yes. <laughs> and this is part of the ongoing Healers series that I've been doing, where I've been showcasing and talking with local healers in order to share the love and share mm-hmm. the healing. And we were just talking, Wes and I, before we turned on the recording, of how it was that we crossed paths. And originally it was because of a mutual friend, well, your partner, Monica, Mm -hmm. who was coming to see me for healing work. And then you came to see me for healing work. That's right. Or did I know? Did I meet you first? No, you met me first when you did a presentation on that Wednesday at noon That's about right. spirit guides. About That's spirit where guides. we connected first in person. Yes, yes. Yep. Spirit guides, not here to help you. Yes. A bit of a controversial approach to it spirit guides. It is indeed. Guides. Yes, I enjoyed it. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, I, and I felt like we had a connection then. Yes, there was so a, did I. There was a common energy from that place of wanting to make a difference in people's lives as mm-hmm. a healer. So why don't you start us off by telling us about the kind of healing work that you do? I'd be pleased to do that. Okay, wonderful. Um, My journey as a healing practitioner began 22 years ago when I was um, introduced to the the practice of EFT, Emotional Freedom Techniques, also known as tapping. And um, I was mystified by it when I first encountered it. I thought, how can that alleviate emotional and physical issues? And so... I started doing it for myself Mm -hmm. and uh, then for other people. Then a couple of years later started uh, offering it to uh, as part of my healing practice and teaching it as well. And I had been trained, uh, been working for almost 10 years at that point, uh, learning shamanic and spiritual healing techniques. And Mm -hmm. the energetic healing that EFT offers supplemented that really well. And then I just started exploring it, just amazed at at how effective it is Mm -hmm. and loving helping people with it. I just really have enjoyed a lot of that. And... um, yeah, that's that's the capsule version of the story. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have had personal experience with EFT as well. I did mm-hmm. some EFT training with a, a fellow here in town who was offering it. Leonard Thornton? No. Mm. Oh, what was his last name? I think it was Leonard Thornton, and he was running EFT classes. Was that me? I think that was you. Uh, it's the wonders of technology okay. and live recordings. Yes. And, and the most profound experience I had in his class was one night I was doing EFT on my vision. Mm. I, I've, I've always had very poor vision, uh, at least since I was a teenager. And one of my biggest fears is losing my vision. Right. And I know there's a past life connection to it. I already have mm. done some work on that. Something about having my eyeballs taken out. Um, Ooh. Yeah. The king didn't like what I saw. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, but that aside, so I wanted to work on that fear and I wanted to improve my eyesight. So I spent, a, a, I don't know, half an hour or so going through the whole technique mm-hmm. and doing the tapping and even though and I'm still and all that good stuff. And then that night I woke up about three o'clock in the morning and I went to the bathroom and I'm standing in front of the mirror and I realize I don't have my glasses on. I can see myself in the mirror. Whoa. Normally I, I couldn't even see myself in the mirror. That if I gives was me a shiver. Standing in front yeah. of it. And then I did the classic thing that so many people do when something like that happens, when a miracle like that happens. I don't believe it. Mm-hmm. You don't believe what, what did it. I don't believe it. I don't believe yeah. it happened. Oh my gosh, this is such a miracle, blah, blah. I woke up the next morning and my vision was back to what it had been before. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, and that was 20 years ago. I, I could probably go back and do some more work on it, do you think? No doubt. Yeah? Yeah. I could correct it again. You can. <laughs> yeah. And then what you can do is you can work on the um, idea that you don't believe it or you don't deserve mm. it. There's all oh, kinds of layers of yes. that sort of thing. Or go right back into that past life mm-hmm. and, and heal what that king did to you. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I didn't even know we were going to be talking about this today. Mm. I'd completely forgotten about that experience in the first place. I'm so happy to have that connection made. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's a very powerful dealing with, with past life stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd like to offer a bit of a thing. We may get into this, mm-hmm. but the idea is this. We have two threads that join in our lives. One of them is our ancestral stuff from our bloodline. The other one is our soul stuff, mm-hmm. and that's where past lives come in. Mm-hmm. So and in my work, I deal with both of those. Right, and, and the ancestral line isn't always going to be the reincarnational line. No. We choose what ancestral line we're going to participate in. We choose the DNA 
um, matrix that we're going to participate in in each lifetime. That's right. And so that then connects yeah. us to different cultures, different languages, different roles that mm -hmm. we play as, as men and women. It's much yeah. more than simply coming back to life. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Just yes. like with EFT, there's so many layers of it. Yeah. I love doing past life regression mm -hmm. work. Me too. Uh, or future yeah. life regression work. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And do you ever do concurrent life work? What do you mean by that? The belief that we live more than one life at a time. At one time. At one time. I know that that's possible, mm -hmm. but I haven't gotten into that yet. I okay. haven't had any people come to me and say, this is this is what I'm experiencing. Can you work with me in this? Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I don't think it's as common. And I think even in, I think in North America, it's enough for us to wrap our heads around the idea that we could live more than once for yes, a lot of people. It really is, yeah. And then to suggest that, well, we could connect with a future lifetime. And people are looking at you going, but that hasn't happened yet. How can we possibly do that? When you go into the realm of souls, there is no time. Exactly. We are not limited by time. Yeah. It's yeah. all time it's is simultaneous. Yeah. yeah. All time is simultaneous. We can connect with past, present, future. Mm -hmm. And all are happening at the same time. So that healing work can happen with a ripple effect. Yes. That when we do the healing in this moment, we're sending out a ripple of new experience to all of ourselves. Mm -hmm past, present, and future, to benefit from that healing work. Yes. I find that when I describe it like that to people, they understand the depth of the work that they're doing when they do their healing work. Mm -hmm. It helps them understand that it isn't just about them. Right? That's so true. And the, and the power of it in their lives and the lives of the people around them. Sometimes when I've done EFT in particular, and, and I, what I should say is that EFT is my primary modality, mm -hmm. and um, I bring in some of the shamanic teachings mm -hmm. that I have. Mm -hmm. I also bring in other stuff from uh, the realm of souls and that sort of thing. But EFT is the primary one. And and I use it for healing past life stuff, yeah. um, as well as ancestral stuff in terms of epigenetic um, trauma and that sort of mm -hmm. thing. So it's, it's a powerful technique. And some of the other stuff just flows naturally into it. Yeah. yeah. Do you find that the more techniques that you have in your <coughs> tool belt the better able you are to help people when they come to you. No question about it. Yeah. One of the sayings that I heard a long time ago was, when the only tool you've got is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. <laughs> and I think a lot That's of us, correct. when we get started, <laughs> we have a, a small toolkit. Mm -hmm. And so we try to apply our tools to stuff where maybe there's another technique that would work better. Yeah. But what I have found is that EFT supplements the shamanic training that I have really well. Mm -hmm. Because EFT deals with emotional upset. The right. shamanic training I have, which is based on... Uh, no Native North American cultures that have been around for a long time mm -hmm. uh, does not include the idea of emotional healing. And I wondered oh, about that. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I wondered about that. But then I thought those people grew up in cultures that were so tight-knit that they were always supported in their emotional mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. They also knew how to discipline themselves emotionally in ways that we don't right. anymore. Right. And we now, and I don't think that's a bad thing, that we now are paying more attention to emotion because mm -hmm. it's, it's part of the wounding that we carry, and now we know how to genuinely heal it rather than suppressing yeah. it. Um, this, it's so interesting that the conversation is going in this way because mm. this morning I was having a conversation with my daughter actually about um, ayahuasca, about mushrooms, about other kinds of um, substances that will affect us and create different experiences for us. Mm -hmm. Hallucinogenic, multidimensional, mind expansion, yep. all that kind of stuff. And we were looking at why is it different, or I was explaining to her from my experience, um, Although I should say I haven't done ayahuasca, but I have done mushrooms that I've picked myself and I've mm. had a, a sacred experience with them. Um, why is it that, that people, we have different experiences with this? Mm. And I've, I've talked to other people in the shamanic community who do ayahuasca ceremony. And their, their experience is that people who are coming to something like ayahuasca from a culture that does not allow for emotional healing... Mm. go into the emotional healing very deeply during the ayahuasca ceremony. That that's what comes up for them. It's the pain, the wounding, yeah. the guilt, the shame, all of that is, is where they go. And so I know mm -hmm. for myself, um, friends who, I've, who I know who have taken ayahuasca, they've done it for that emotional healing piece. What I've heard al alter alternately is that for people who have grown up in cultures where ayahuasca was used, for example, mm -hmm. have a different relationship with it. And these are often cultures that, like you say, the emotional wounding doesn't happen the way it happens for us in North America because the culture looks after each other. Yes. 
there's an accountability piece, there's a responsibility piece, and you don't get away with it. There's a commitment piece, too, yeah, to each other. That's yeah. right. And to one's own self-discipline, if you like, or, mm-hmm. or healing, because it happens in different ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so then my, <coughs> my query was, does that mean that somebody who has done their work and is no longer carrying that emotional pain or never has in the first place in the way that we do in North America, if they take a substance like ayahuasca or a sacred mushroom, they are they going to have that mind altering experience, dimensional, interdimensional expansion that so many people are seeking from these substances, but who end up going into the emotional trauma instead? I, my understanding, <clears throat> and this is something that I've come to after years of working with people who are wounded mm-hmm. emotionally primarily, but you know, if you carry that long enough, it becomes it manifests physically yes, as well. Yes, absolutely. Working with people who have that, which I think is true of all of us, but to differing degrees. Some people, it's like you can you can live with it. When when we do EFT, this is a good way of illustrating this. Mm-hmm. EFT, we use a scale of zero to ten. Zero right. is it doesn't matter. Ten is it couldn't get any worse. Mm. And what I found is that zero to three, you can live with it. It's right. it's in there in, in a little bit, but most of the time it doesn't bother you. Yeah. Four, five, six. It's kind of there, and it affects you every now and then. And every now and then you say, oh, I just acted like my grandmother, the mm. alcoholic. Mm. Seven and eight, it's always niggling at you mm-hmm. and, and and influences you a lot. Right. Nine and ten, it drives your life. Wow. And so what I want to do, or mm-hmm. part of my goal, is to take people who are anywhere above five, anywhere from six to ten, mm-hmm. with a given issue or a whole range of issues, which is true for most of us, right. and work at healing that. And when we heal that, that would take care of the ayahuasca or any other substance like that, mm-hmm. uh, the, the tendency to go into the emotional stuff. Right. And then it takes you to an elevated state. So part of my goal in the work that I do, Megan, is mm-hmm. to help people heal. And then when they've done enough healing, or if they don't need healing, also to offer them elevated states of consciousness. Right, right. Because I've experienced both. And, yeah. And... Uh, uh, particularly through the shamanic work and, and the work in the realm of souls. Mm-hmm. The realm of souls is an amazing place. It's mm-hmm. indescribable. Um, and I'll try to describe it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all, I, all I will say about it is that the dominant emotion is love and the mm-hmm. dominant feeling is joy. Mm. And it's not in any way tainted. So if you if you can imagine unconditional love that is absolute, mm. if I go there, I will either get lost or I get choked up if I try to talk about it. Wow. And so now I just visit it in little little bites yeah. just to get some of that amazing feeling. I want to take people there. Mm-hmm. And sometimes what happens is that I will have a client come to me for EFT. I bring in something called a drum dance, mm-hmm. which is basically me moving around the person with a drum, mm-hmm. with a shamanic beat going on, creating yeah. an acoustic and energetic container within which they can have a pretty amazing experience. Right. Everybody has their own journey with that. But often that will open the door and and allow people to recognize that there's something more. And so Mm. sometimes people will then say, I want to do that journey into the realm of souls. Right. And I love that. Wow. The healing work and then the elevated consciousness and and a sense of purpose and and acceptance of of the circumstances of this life. Yes. Well, I love love how you're describing that. Um, It's been coming up a lot in Mm. my work as well recently is, well, what's next? You know, I'm yes. healed now, which it, it's possible. I've seen it happen. Sufficiently healed, yes. <laughs> Sufficiently healed that yeah. that my experiences are no longer a trigger for me to fall into old behaviors right. and old patterns. I recognize them now as part of my story, part of who I am. I give them meaning and purpose. And they're not driving you anymore. And they're I not have driving this, you. I have this image of that stuff back here driving you. Yeah. And then you bring it out and you look at it and you heal it. And so now you can say, oh, yeah, you. Yes, you know? that's and right. it's not driving you anymore. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. It's not defining you anymore. That's a good word. And then the question becomes, okay, so so now what? And I feel mm-hmm. like what I think that's what you're addressing right now is well then then now the now what is what more can we invite yes. into our experience of expansion now that we've unpacked all of the pain and the wounding. Mm-hmm. Now we can in fact have these uh, these mind blowing Yes, yes oh, indeed. connections. My goosebumps are coming up like yeah. crazy to those other realms that are not available to us when we're in pain and wounding. Mm-hmm. They're just—it's not that we aren't good enough to go there. It's we can't actually see them. Mm-hmm. We don't recognize them. That's a—that's a good point. Um, I—I know that there have been people in the stories that I've read about journeying to the realm of souls through the work of Michael Newton. Mm-hmm. Um, people who come to some of his 
trained people in a state of great emotional distress. Right. And they do the journey, and they are capable of it in the hands of a sufficiently trained, well-trained and compassionate hypnotherapist or meditative guide. Mm -hmm. And so they can experience healing, particularly if it's about why am I in so much pain? Dealing mm -hmm. with the pain itself, yeah. I think, requires healing. Yes. But if it's a question of why, that, that can really be addressed effectively by a journey to the realm of souls. Because mm -hmm. you get to find out why you chose your family, your circumstances, right. and even your body. Right. And yeah. for me, when I made that journey, it, I came back from my first journey there, just changed deeply changed wow. and and so much more settled within myself. Yeah. So how did you learn this technique? Can you talk about that? I can. Yeah. Um, well, I after I was introduced to Michael Newton and he he wrote three books mm -hmm. and and uh, edited one other one which is a collection of stories from hypnot hypnotherapists trained in the Michael mm -hmm. Michael Newton. It's the newtoninstitute.org. Okay. Not to be confused with the Isaac Newton Institute, which is a very different organization. Right. <laughs> Yeah, so, Science, medicine, oh, you know, it's all connected. Yeah, that's right. Uh, eventually it is. Mm -hmm. And so I I was fascinated and gave the book, his first book, Journey of Souls, to a couple of people. Both of them gave it back to me. And they said, well, it's kind of repetitive. And that caught, took me aback a little bit. But then I started thinking, if they see it that way, why was I so captivated right. by it? And the conclusion came pretty quickly. It's like, I know this stuff. Mm. And that's mm -hmm. due to the shamanic journeying that I had been doing. Right. So when I went from my first journey to the realm of souls and had the experiences that I just mentioned, plus a whole bunch of others, mm -hmm. uh, I came back thinking, you know, I can do this. And so what I've done is I've combined the shamanic meditative techniques with the techniques that I experienced myself. Okay. And and use those to guide people into first a past life. That's the first session. Okay. A significant past life. Right. That word is key. Okay. And learning the lessons from that past mm. life. And then that gets people accustomed to the journey. And yeah. then taking them into the journey where they actually go through into, actually take people into a past life and through the death experience of that past life. Oh, into the realm in between. Where the soul, right. the soul then moves out of the body right. and goes into the realm of souls. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and, and then there are all kinds of experiences that are available there, including that wonderful experience of love and joy. Mm -hmm. so. Wow. That's the short story. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's a question that I want to want to put to you, because this has been coming up for me a lot right, lately as well, uh, and it's something that I'm, I'm hoping to do my next Playing on the Edge radio show about. Mm. It's on the edge of not healing. Why do people not heal, not want to heal, not wish to heal, maybe don't see the need to heal, What's your, what's your opinion on that? What well, do you think? if you start out with people who just don't want to go there, mm -hmm. I think it is fear that they will be overwhelmed. Mm. And, and some of it, people get so attached to their pain. I modified the, the uh, was it Descartes or one of the philosophers yeah. who said, I think, therefore I am. Right. I modified that to, I hurt, therefore I am. Oh, like yeah. So much of the identity gets yeah. bound up in, in the pain. Yes. And you, you run, I've run across a few people like that. Mm -hmm. And I think that people are wanting to change when they realize, I don't have to be in this pain. Mm -hmm. But there's a point at which the discomfort, the unknown, the fear of the unknown has to become less than the pain of staying with the wounding. Right. And some people just say, I want out of this. I don't care what it takes. I'm willing yeah. to make the effort to try to get out at least. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I love about EFT is that if I run into somebody who, who can't go there, I yeah. tap on the phrase, I can't go there. Mm. And so you approach it through the layers until somebody is able to face pretty horrific stuff right. um, yeah. uh, with confidence. Yeah. I, I, after I, I've tapped myself so much, I should have calluses. In, in, <laughs> I still there should be dead today. marks in your head. <laughs> That's right. Almost. <laughs> um, and, and I still tap today, mm -hmm. but what I discovered after, I don't know, maybe 10 years or so of tapping for myself mm -hmm. and others, mm -hmm. I'm not afraid of anything anymore. Mm. Uh, I, wow. I, I haven't heard all the stories that they're already here, right. but I've heard enough that I just realized I, I just, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll be working with someone and they tell a story that, that if I weren't in the responsible position of guiding them, right. it would move me to tears. Yeah. But I know there's a way through. So let's come back to your question. Why yes. do people not want to yes. heal? Yeah. 
Um, sometimes it's that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people will experience partial healing, mm -hmm. and then they stop. Mm -hmm. And there are two reasons for that. I think one of them is that the new situation is unfamiliar and a little uncomfortable. Like, it doesn't hurt anymore when I think about, you know, what my father did. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, so I, I don't know what to do with myself yeah. now. The other one is that um, they start from a pretty low baseline mm -hmm. and then they move up. Mm -hmm. And it is so much better. It's like, yeah. I don't need to do any more healing. I made it. Yeah. And so people stop pursuing their healing uh, that way. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes, too, it, it just gets to be, you know, do I have to keep peeling this onion and, you know, the yeah. tears of every layer of the onion? And that's where that drum dance that I mentioned comes in because mm -hmm. it gives people an expanded experience. I think we have to do that. In addition to the uh, grim is not quite the right word, but the serious work of healing, mm -hmm. there's got to be some of that joy and some of that wow yes. feeling as well, the yeah. expansive stuff. Absolutely. I think it's important for people to recognize that healing takes time. Mm -hmm. right? We're in linear time. We're a time-based species. We are. It took time for these events to happen in your life. It took time for you to connect to these events and have your experience of them. Right. It took time for you to create a relationship with them that was so strong, you were unwilling to break it, mm -hmm. that being in that pain. Very true. And so it's going to take time and patience with oneself. Yep to move through that healing journey. What does it feel like to be healed? Mm -hmm. Right, It's different for every person. What it feels like for me to be healed is not going to be the same as what it feels like for you to be healed. Yes. And we're all, I think, in different places along that journey of becoming whole, becoming authentic, becoming mm -hmm. good with ourselves. You know, I, I like to use the term in right relationship with, with myself, ourselves. With ourselves. Yes, that's fundamental. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, and I think it's an important question to ask because as healers, it can sometimes be what drives us to do our work, which is that we want to see our clients healed. Mm -hmm. And it's important for us to be able to backstep a little bit and see where our own healing work has to happen. Yes. And then also to recognize that, again, each person is on their journey. And if a, if a client says, I'm healed, I let them be healed. It's not up to me to decide whether they are or they are not. That's, that's very wise. Yeah. I, I like that. Yeah. yeah. The other side of it is that I will often have clients who say to me when things come up in our sessions and my my um, um, baseboard I guess like yours is EFT mine is intuitive counseling mm -hmm. and then all the other things come in from there right yep. when people say to me but I've already looked at that I spent 10 years looking at my relationship with my mother I've seen psychiatrists and psychologists and I've taken all the medications and I've I've done all my work on that why is it still coming up and I'm not healed I say, well, what I say to them is, it's not because you failed in the healing that you did. You completed the healing that you did at the time mm -hmm. for where you were at in your life. Yeah. But now you have an opportunity because you know differently, you know more, you could go deeper. Yeah. And if you're ready to, we could start peeling that onion again. Yep. Yeah. And, and if you know differently, there. you do differently. Yeah. 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 And there's no going back. It's a very compassionate <laughs> and beautiful way of saying it. Mm-hmm compassionate for the client, for, for mm -hmm. the person who is losing patience with herself or himself yeah, and wondering, why am I not done with this? Yeah. yeah. Why is it still there? Mm -hmm. And then we have these beautiful tools. I mean, that's one of the things I love about EFT. It's, you have it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't need anything special. Basically, if you have fingers and knuckles, yeah. you can do AFT, EFT. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. And even uh, if you don't have fingers and knuckles, you could still. Yeah. Well, <laughs> actually, you can you can do EFT. Um, it's called virtual EFT. Mm. You can imagine tapping. Yes. I've actually been on airplanes when somebody I saw. I remember one particular time I was we were about to take off, and there was another passenger. She was diagonally across from me, dressed up in a business suit, looking mm. really, really well put together, mm -hmm. but obviously terrified, uh, barely hanging on. Yeah. And while she was really hanging on to her armrest. <laughs> um, and so I did uh, a little bit of virtual EFT mm -hmm. for her. Mm -hmm. So imagine myself to be her mm -hmm. and feeling as well as I could emp empathically mm -hmm. the fear that she was feeling and then just sort of felt myself tapping the EFT points. And I looked at her a little while ago and she was relaxed and reading a book. A little while, did I say a go? A later. little while ago, a little while later. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know time. <laughs> it was a while ago, yeah, you, you lose track. <laughs> that's you know, right. Here, then, now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's a beautiful story, and it, it brings me to a question that I have for you. When you see somebody who's in distress, and you're not able, for whatever reason, to ask their permission to do work for them, how do you know you're 
allowed to do work for them? How do you know it's okay? I can I can do the work, and if it is not okay, there won't be any effect. Mm, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I I just I I checked with the the whatever you wherever it is the divine. Right. And that's the answer. Okay. It's like you can't force heal healing no. on someone in that way the the way that we might want to force somebody to take a pill. Yeah. And it's yeah. just about as inconsiderate to do that. Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. The way that I work with my students with that question, because it always mm-hmm. comes up, is that uh, you can ask twice of their higher self from your higher self, mm-hmm. do I have permission from this person's higher self to work on their energy body? And if you get a yes, your, bo- your body will move forward. Or if mm. you've got a pendulum, you can do it with the oh, pendulum. Yeah, yeah. Right? If you get a no, I say ask again from a place of compassion, mm-hmm. being really sure that you're not asking for you, you're yes. asking for them. Yep. And if it's still a no, then you're done. Then yep, you it, don't, is, it is not your job to interfere job. with their path. That's right, yeah. yeah. But I like the idea of, of the checking, the check-in to see is, is this, do I have permission, mm-hmm. right? Because we, we do, we can't just go barreling into other people's lives with what we know or what we think we know could help them. Yep. And that's probably one of the most frustrating parts about being a healer. At least I have it done can that. Be. I'm yep. like, no, but if you just did this, yes. just have some more water. <laughs> yeah. Go for I've a walk heard that in the woods. referred to as the helping hand strikes again. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So that whole idea of of checking in, check in with the divine. Do I have permission? Yes. Or, or like you say, you, if you do the work and nothing changes, then they mm-hmm. didn't need it for whatever reason, mm-hmm. and it's not our place to question yeah. the why of that. So that brings me to, to talking about, um, you were talking earlier about epigenics and those those lines of our past, of our mm-hmm. cultural past, our, our past lives. Um, working with past life trauma, what about working with this lifetime's trauma, but before we're verbal? Either when we're infants and things happen to us or for us, or we're actually in the womb. And mm-hmm. things are happening for us and to us. Great segue. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm the segue queen. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, what I have found in working with clients who, uh, I have a technique that I refer to as regression. Mm -hmm. If they have a current issue, Mm -hmm. I invite them to give me ratings on a bunch of emotions and I identify the emotions for them, fear, shame, sadness, anger, you know, and a bunch of others. Mm -hmm. And then I invite them, if they're strong enough, Mm -hmm. and and I always get their permission to do that, to kind of make a soup out of all of those emotions. In other words, allow Mm. themselves to feel them. Mm -hmm. And then, and this is where I mix metaphors or images, Make make that a temporal conduit to an earlier memory, and I and it may have nothing to do mm. with the current situation. Right. But I just say let the memories come up, and what I do is I record how old they were, and then just a couple of details about it—a place or a circumstance or a person—and mm-hmm. we go back as far as we can. And what I have found is that people are not limited to what we would call, I don't know, conscious memory or or mm-hmm. this life memory because. I think it's generally accepted that before the age of three, we don't remember much. Yeah. So I tell them, before that age, you're not likely to have a clear memory of something. It may be reasonably clear, but if you get back into the womb, Mm -hmm. you're not going to have much of a memory. And what it will be, particularly if you go all the way back to before, I forget how many weeks it is. uh, Well, the heart starts to beat at 21 weeks Mm -hmm. in the womb. So prior Mm -hmm. to that... And even after that, the brain is not sufficiently developed for any memory to occur. Right. But if you connect with yourself at that point, you will have a feeling or an impression. Mm -hmm. And usually it's more of a feeling than anything else. Right. And what we can do is allow that to come forward. And then I ask the client, just hold that feeling. Right. With the consciousness that you're in the womb, and we tap on that. Okay. And what happens at that point is we tap it so that the feeling disappears, but the knowledge of being in the womb stays. Mm. And for any traumatic mm. memory, mm-hmm. often there is maybe 20% or less of what the memory was and 80% right. or more of the emotional content. Mm-hmm. So what can happen sometimes is that if we tap out the distressing emotional content, it feels almost like the memory is hard to hold on to because it's not so charged. Right. And then having dealt with the very earliest memory, I bring them forward through subsequent memories. And I know from my own experience that when I first started doing that for myself, mm-hmm. we, I, I found that I could find an early memory mm-hmm. of a, with a given emotional content to it right. and tap on that one. It would disappear. I'd come to a more recent memory and it was almost like, like a soap bubble. Yeah. It felt like it was going pop, pop, pop as I came forward. Mm-hmm. And then I get to the present time 
What am I? What was that memory? What was I tapping on? <laughs> it actually gone. happens like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I I call it the house of cards. Mm -hmm. Where you pull the one that the heart the card that's holding up the house of cards. Once you pull that out, yeah. the house of cards falls away, and you don't have to go through every single card in that yes. house. You you recognize that there's a cascade effect. Yes, absolutely. That happens. Yeah. And that's the way the body, the body has built up in its cellular memory, all the events that have happened that are connected to, in some way, that first source event yeah. that you're talking about. And then once we connect with the source event and release the pain and trauma of that event, all the things that were stacked up they, don't have anything right. to hold on to anymore. Yeah. yeah. And so they dissipate. Yeah. I call those miracle healings because the client's experience of them is so immediate. Mm-hmm. We call them one minute wonders. One minute yeah, wonders too. works too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah, and just to to watch somebody go from so scrunched into that pain to yeah. sitting upright, oh. and I love the clear the clarity in people's yeah. eyes when when they've just really released something that that was very painful for them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I would love it if you could take us through an an EFT yeah. session. Is there um, something that you that you want to connect to? Okay. Um, well, I'm, I'm looking at a, a beautiful rose quartz lamp right here. So I'm mm -hmm. going to pretend that I am really afraid of rose quartz lamps. I'm having trouble sitting this close to a rose quartz lamp. And if I look at that rose quartz lamp and I think about how bad it is, uh, on that zero to 10 scale, I'm saying, oh boy, I can barely be here. So this is an eight, at least. It might wow. be a nine. Let's call it a nine. Okay. So then what I do <clears throat> is... Um, I'm going to abbreviate it because there's another couple of steps that we could put in. But basically the idea is that there are eight points that we tap on. <clears throat> and the key part of EFT is you have to be concentrated on whatever it is, is the issue. If And, and this, is, this is contrary to what a lot of people want to do, me included, is that you want to do anything but face that rose quartz lamp. Mm. So I would much rather run outside or even look outside. But what you have to do is face the fear. What that does, according to the theory of EFT, which is the same as the theory of acupuncture, <clears throat> is it disrupts the flow of energy. You get blockages of the energy flow in your body. That is what causes the negative emotion. So I look at the rose quartz lamp. I say, it's bad, and it's bad at a nine. And I just think, I, and you can use all kinds of phrases. I hate rose quartz. I'm terrified. Um, rose quartz will hurt me, whatever the whatever is the juiciest words for you. And then I focus on that. <clears throat> I hate that rose quartz. I do not like rose quartz. By the way, crown point, one on either side for most of them. <clears throat> eyebrow, inside of the eyebrow, right where the eyebrow joins or just ends in there. Side of the eye, I hate rose quartz. I really detest rose quartz. In fact, I'm terrified of it, but I don't want to admit that. I'm terrified. Rose quartz, rose quartz. This is the collarbone point. It's actually just off the collarbone. And I usually give myself what's called the thymus thump because the thymus gland is right back there. This feels really good. And then under the <laughs> arm. And that one is kind of where your armpit, your rib cage joins your armpit. And right in there, sometimes it's a oh, bit yeah. tender. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there are it's lymph glands lymph in ground, there. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. so that one. And I will usually tap three rounds. And I come back and I look at the rose quartz. It's kind of pretty, you know. And so that was a brief EFT session. Okay. If you um, go to YouTube and enter my name, which, by the way, is on the book that I wrote called Born Whole. Um, and my name, and you can Google my name mm -hmm. and then uh, EFT. You will get, among other things, a video that shows you how to do tapping for yourself. And another one that deals specifically with uh, unpleasant memories. Okay. So I, mean, I invite people to have a look at that. And there are probably hundreds of people who offer EFT videos. So find one that you mm -hmm. connect with and use it. That's one of the things that I love about EFT is, is it's available to anybody. Yes. You know, and the, my, my contribution is to help people find the memory or, mm -hmm. or face the issue. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes people say, you know, you know, my brother. And all they can think about is my brother. But what we have to do is find out what the detail is, like why right. did you have that? What happened? Yes. Yeah. Well, you're. I mean, it's a memory, basically. Yeah. And you're, you're doing EFT <clears throat> and then you're bringing in so much 
of what you already know how to do, different tools from that toolbox. Very true, yeah. To give a deeper experience of, of healing. Mm -hmm. Because why only use one hammer when <laughs> maybe a screwdriver is going to work right. yeah. better? That's right, yeah. Yeah, why use a hammer when a screwdriver is what you need? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So you've just you've just shared us your book. Tell us a little yes. bit more about your book. Um, this, this book is the story. I'll hold it up here. <laughs> this book is my story of doing my own regression into my mother's womb before I was born and healing the trauma of some of the events that we all experience but don't mm -hmm. recognize the potential trauma of those events. The two biggest ones are conception and the first really hard contraction of labor. Oh. And, yeah, it feels like rejection. Yeah, I yeah. can see and, that. And from the point of view of the sperm, Conception feels like absolute fulfillment and annihilation. Mm -hmm. And from the point of view of the egg, it feels like uh, absolute fulfillment and violation. And I experienced mm. it both those ways. But when I went back and healed those traumas, it felt like a royal wedding without the politics. <laughs> it was an amazing experience. Wow. And, and that, so those are some what we call developmental events. And then also in the womb, uh, there is your mother's belief system emotions that she might be experiencing. Yeah. If my mother had too much strong tea, I was completely jangled and mm -hmm. I had no idea, t I couldn't know why. And I mm -hmm. couldn't know that her worldview and her emotional state mm -hmm. were not normal because basically it was all I was experiencing and I didn't have any reference points right. for, for other stuff. Right. That's from a human point of view. And then the yeah. soul enters the, 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 uh, the human, mm -hmm. but the soul doesn't bring in... Um, Deliberately so. The, the soul does not bring in with it the understanding of mm -hmm. how temporary this is. Right. We need amnesia in order to have our journey yeah. with each incarnation. Frustrating, isn't it? Sometimes? Oh, yeah, <laughs> it is. <laughs> Why can't we just yeah. have all the information? <laughs> but from the point of view of a soul, an incarnation is a wonderful event. Because yes, exactly. We have these things that we can work with. We can touch people and taste yeah. food and... Yeah. And uh, swim in the ocean and all kinds of wonderful things that souls don't get to do. That's right. We get to experience physical life here yes. on earth that non-corporeal beings don't That's get exactly to experience. Right. I have a personal theory, but one of the reasons that we choose to come back lifetime after lifetime, mm. it's for privacy. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yes, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. So I can't read Wes's thoughts. He can't read my thoughts. I could make assumptions based on what I know about him, what he might mm -hmm. be thinking, but I can't read his thoughts. And I also can't read his emotions. Like, I cannot feel what you're feeling. Pain is very subjective. Mm -hmm. It belongs to us. We can try to describe it to other people, but unless they've been through something similar, and even then, it's very personal. Mm -hmm. I feel like when we're in a soul form, a soul state, there is none of that personal experience. There's no need for it. There's no need for it. Yeah. We're constantly in each other's energies. It's like being in a lava lamp with a hundred different colors and mm -hmm. we're bumping into each other and, and we don't even have to explain our presence or ourselves. It's just an immediate knowing. But sometimes that can be a bit much, even for a soul. That's, that's, that's fascinating. Yeah. I do know that being in the soul realm, um, for souls that have a certain level of maturity, you have the ability not to transmit your thoughts. But there's also the opportunity to meld with another soul mm -hmm. in a fashion that is absolutely astonishing yeah it is it's not sexual um particularly but mm -hmm. but it is it's amazing mm -hmm. yeah so. yeah wild stuff yes right? it is it's <laughs> wonderful I, i'm just thinking about how with metaphysical and alternative healing we're really asking our clients we're asking people to trust themselves and to trust us as mm -hmm. the facilitators of that healing that they have everything within themselves that they need to do this work. Yep. They don't need a pill. They don't even need a tonic. They don't even need a crystal lamp. Everything resides within us. Very true. And the tools are great to have, and I'm a big proponent of them. I mean, I make a lot of these tools, the Nature Essence sprays and my Crystal Chakra sprays, and working with the essential oils. But we don't actually need any of that. That's true, and they help us to to focus yes. because there's so many distractions for us as human beings. Yes, uh, I know that that's that's a big part of the role of ceremony. Exactly, that we bring people together, and we all have a similar experience, so at least we have something to talk about. Mm -hmm. And then that can that has the effect of 
Sometimes when we get together with a group of other people, the energetic thing that happens among us can be incredible. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's happened when I've been singing or drumming with other people oh, at times. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. 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 Well, how can people find you? Well, my website, uh, let's see now. Okay, if you have a look at the spelling of that name, <laughs> my website is wgeats. Oh, I'm sorry, that's my email address. Uh, my email address is wgeats at windwalker.ca and my website is windwalker.ca. Excellent. Uh, and do you have any classes coming up? Any workshops? Any public speeches um, or public talking? I don't. I'm working on that for, okay. for next year. Right now I'm focusing on um, working with individual clients. Okay. And if anybody would like to get in touch with me just to talk about uh, what's going on or if you're interested in any of what in any of what I've had to say please get in touch with me I would welcome that I highly recommend it very gentle soul here thank you <laughs> okay. thank you everybody for joining us on magic mystery and medicine I look forward to seeing you next time have a fabulous wonderful evening make sure to subscribe and share share the love share the healing bye everybody